Well, hi there, everyone. This is Scott Nicholson, and this is my MIT video blog for my sabbatical. This is Friday, January 6th, uh, 2012. So I returned to MIT a little earlier this week. I was going to stay in Syracuse uh, throughout most of this week, but then they predicted snowpocalypse coming through, and I said, all right, I'm going to get out while I can. And we only got five inches back in Syracuse, so it would have been okay for us. Five inches is not a big deal. That's just par for the course. Um, but anyway, I'm back here. What I've been working on over the break, several things. So I uh, worked a lot on uh, the, what I talked about last time, a, a grant proposal to attempt to create a, an alternate reality game toolkit to make it easier for libraries to do that. I'm still seeking libraries that are interested in being a tester for that. If you, if you are interested, please contact me right away at scott at scottnicholson.com and I can bring you in as a tester for that toolkit. Uh, the other thing I worked on a lot over the break was a new theoretical framework. So one of the things that you do as a scholar is when you're entering a, a new area, you're trying to figure out what are the theories that are going to power the way you think about the world? What, is, what are you going to come in and say, these are my assumptions I'm making? And so as I've been thinking more and more about gamification, I said, all right, I'm going to put together a theoretical framework. And now it's really embedded. It started out with thinking about the concepts of relevance out of library information science. Um, that's something that that concept of relevance, the idea that uh, in order for to know if something is relevant to a, an information need, you have to know about that specific user. That concept of the user-centered relevance, that situational relevance, is something that I'm bringing and building my theoretical framework around for meaningful gamification, and that's the term I'm using. So I've written this thing up, a, a, a user-centered theoretical framework for meaningful gamification, where I really try and think about, and I'm taking theories from education and some theories from HCI, uh, which is human-computer interaction, and some theories from library information science, and bringing that all together in order to give us a better base from which to move if we want to make gamification that's meaningful. I'm going to make another video all about what gamification is, uh, so look for that to come in the next week or so. But that's, that's, that's my, my big writing piece right now, is thinking through the underlying theories that I'm going to be using when I talk about gamification. On a fun side, I went out to Fun Spot in New Hampshire. Fun Spot is the world's largest arcade, and they have a very large classic arcade museum uh, where you can play through hundreds of video games from the 70s and the 80s. Uh, they're, they've got about 600 games of different sorts, and the big area has a lot of classic games, a lot of the stuff I grew up with. Uh, it was about a two-hour trip, but a little fun time experiencing and re-experiencing a lot of the games of my youth. I made a separate video on that in my YouTube channel. If you go to S. Nicholson at YouTube, you can find that video about Fun Spot. So that's been it for the fun stuff I've been doing and the work stuff I've been doing. Oh yes, I've been playing Skyrim. Skyrim is a new video game. Perhaps a lot of you have been playing it. I played that quite a bit during the break. Um, it's a really nicely done game as far as the engagement of you with the story. It's the first computer-based role-playing game where I found myself making choices during the game that my character would make instead of making choices that Scott wanted to make. And I like this kind of game quite a bit. Most of the time I go in and, and uh, I like to make choices that Scott wants to make and to, to see different parts of the game. And as I played this game, at least for the first half of it, I found myself just wandering and, and exploring and then making decisions saying, you know, that's not what my character would do. And that's the sort of thing I normally do in a tabletop role-playing game. So I find it interesting that the game had elements that brought in those same feelings I have during a tabletop role-playing game into a single-player computer game experience. Very interesting. If you haven't taken a look at it and that sounds appealing, I'd say to, to, uh, to take a look. Uh, so that's been it. Uh, we're going to be getting ready for uh, the Independent Activities Program, which starts in a few days here at MIT. It runs for the month of January. The idea is to offer courses to students that are outside of their traditional areas, courses on cooking and food and juggling and theater and whatever. Um, I'm offering a course in a few weeks in conjunction with the MIT libraries where students will be creating an ARG tool, an ARG uh, for the libraries, and you'll be seeing more about that in a few weeks. So that's my adventures from this week uh, back in Boston, and I look forward to another semester of explorations. Take care, and I'll talk to you later.